comment, like, and subscribe. Hey, for those new to the channel, thanks for all the new subscribers. This is my 2003 Mach 1. It's got a built engine, cams, VMP supercharger, which is old school, 2.3 size, uh, headers, a stock computer with an SCT tune. It used to have a stick shift in it, and it went 1018 at 140 in a quarter mile on a set of slicks, but uh, I couldn't get the 60 foot better than the 160. So I wanted to switch it up to an automatic. I put a 6R80 in it. Um, it was out of a navigator, it was stock. I immediately burned it up on the street and broke the <laughs> intermediate shaft. So I had Jason at Wicked Performance rebuild the transmission with all the goodies that you could ask for. I also put a stall converter in it from FTI. It's a 36 to 3800 stall, nine and a half inch. Today, I got the car up and running. I did a test drive, I put over 60 miles on it so the uh, Quick 6 controller could relearn the shifts, which it was doing beautifully. And what I'm doing now is I'm actually in the software here and I'm adjusting my shift points uh, just a little bit from the factory setting there that I had. And then what's cool about the software, you click on this tab, and you can set a lot of parameters in here. One to really look at is um, here under miscellaneous. You can tell that you got a stall converter. You can set it up for your trans brake to work, which I have. And then under commander here, you can tell it when you want to lock up the torque converter clutch. I don't, I have a single disc, so I only lock mine up in six gear on the street at part throttle. But at wide open throttle, I don't lock it up uh, with the stock one I had in it from the Navigator. Um, I was locking it up, and I think that probably is what broke that stock intermediate shaft. But either way, um, this video is going to give you a lot of detail, me actually putting the 6R80 in and talking about everything on it. But I just want to, because I got a lot of new subscribers, just want to show you the car. I've had this car for eight years now. The motor's been built for about four years now, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. Uh, I've got a lot of cars in my showcase here. 2016 F-150, 87 Celine, 2008 Pontiac G8, 68 Dodge Charger, and the uh, TT Celine over there. Um, they're all covered up now because I've been working on the mock, but I've got videos of all these cars on my channel. Uh, I'll probably do a video by the end of the year just to recap every car and every combination. But for this video, it's all about the Mach 1. Hope you enjoy. Oh, check out the, the new shirt. Right? And you can't see the back, so I'll have to do this. And then you can see the back. Welcome back, YouTube. It's the middle of October, October 17th. It's about... Um, what, 6.30 now, I just got back from Raleigh. I had to go get my transmission from Jason at Wicked Performance. I've already unloaded it, so I won't bore you with that. But this is the 6R80. It looks just like I took it to him on the outside, but inside is where it counts. And it's got a ton of stuff done to it. One of the things I wanna show you here, a new thing that I wasn't counting on is a brand new FTI torque converter. You see, that's Jason's Wicked Performance's version here. And this is what I'll be putting in it. Now, for you, those that ask, it's a nine and a half inch converter with a 3600 stall. We talked about the camshafts I got in this, which is the L and M, and we figured a little stall won't hurt it. I had the stock converter in it, and it did fine. But with a stall, it should be even better, especially at the track in the 60 foot. And uh, with my two-step I've got on the car, I can actually get on the two-step at like, I don't know, 3,200 and let it flash to 36 or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. But right now, I just want to show you the 6R80 is back, middle of October. It's been a couple months, but I took a little bit of time before I took it to Jason to get my money right. And uh, it was just over four grand to fix it. He did me a really good, solid job on this. Only like 750, 800 bucks in labor. And the rest of it literally was parts. And it's a whole laundry list. It's everything you expect. It's got the upgraded clutches. It's got the intermediate billet shaft in it. It's got a new lead frame uh, body in it. And it also has the Sonics zip kit 
and rebuilt the valve body. So a lot of good stuff in it, plus some other stuff, but uh, that's the highlights you guys will understand. So it's bulletproof. And now with the money I've spent with him and the money I spent with the transmission off of eBay originally, cause it came out of a navigator that was like 600 bucks. I've got roughly 4,700 bucks in this built transmission with a converter. So that's well under the close to eight, nine thousand dollars I had with the previous transmission from the Sala and the Circle D converter I had in it. So we'll see how it does. It's about half what I had in it when I built one for the black car before I took it out and sold it. And now I basically duplicated that effort with another built 6R80 with a converter. So I'm excited to see what happens. So stay tuned and I'll get the Mach 1 now out from its little sleep, roll it here on the lift, jack it up and start putting that transmission in. Uh, again, today being Thursday, it'll probably be the weekend before I get some more good footage, but I'll have it in, put new fluid in it. By the way, I'm running Dextron 6 fluid. It's what Jason recommended, and uh, we'll get it, get it up and going, see what happens. Let me show you a secret. How do you get that big 6R80 past Cook's long tubes? Well, first thing you do is take some ratchet straps, go around the collector tube, pull it over toward the lift. On this side, pull it to the lift. You don't have a lift, get some, something stationary. You wanna pull the tubes apart. Then you wanna get in here and tilt your transmission up. And then you wanna put the bell housing in sideways because basically your starter is what your culprit is. And once you do all that, I also use a strap around here, just extra precaution. And then you simply start positioning it, take your handle, start jacking it up, and it will literally start to fall into place like that. And I'll get in here and move it around and we should be good to go. But that's how you get a 6R80 in and out with long tubes without taking them off from the motor. All right, it's Friday. I have now got the transmission installed, cross members on there and tight, and the mount here. I've got the bolts holding it to the motor. I've got the torque converter bolts in there. I've got to hook up the starter now. I've got to put in the drive shaft, and I got to put on the exhaust. Then I'll fill it up with fluid. Before I do that, I'm gonna take these lines and flush fluid through them so I clean them out, put my O2 sensors in, and then it'll be ready to go. I'll fire it up, I'll get all the fluid levels topped off, and then we'll start testing it. It's uh, almost eight o'clock at night. I had to take a little break, do some stuff, and go get some more fluid. Apparently I didn't have quite enough fluid. I also had to adjust my shift cable here, move that a little bit till it liked where it was. The controller tells you if it's not happy where you have it in gear. Uh, it looks like I got a little bit of leak up there on that top fitting. I have to tighten it up a little bit. I had to keep going back and forth. I had to take my dipstick out, put the factory dipstick in to get the level where I wanted it. And then I knew where on my dipstick I needed to be. And then after all said and done, I ended up using just over 16 quarts of fluid. So basically three of those plus a little extra. And, um, but it's because I've got big number eight lines all the way up to the front with this big cooler. And then from there, I had to put a new uh, converter in it, so all new fluid. So now it's got probably 16 quarts total. Just 
cranked it, warmed it up. You can see there on the temperature, it's down to sea, about about a thousand where it's idling at. Transmission there is uh, 86 degrees and warming up. So what I'm gonna do is let it warm up, take it for a test drive, let it learn, drive it real easy just to get the quick six to control it properly and break into new clutches. I want you to notice is it's in gear, right? It's in drive, got pull on the brake. It's idling right at 900, 950. Perfect. I like that. All right, just cruising through the neighborhood. Shifted into third, running 17 miles an hour. Let's see what happens when we stop. Idle still real good, right about 9950. Alright, let's go. course you always got to have it for your beer getter just for the weekend car's doing great put over 50 miles on it shifting good running good it's awesome you can see that riding around 172 degrees right now that cooler's working great transmission's running great section not the a but in the b close to right here between the top of that line and the middle of b so any, anywhere in here is perfect and mine's literally sitting right there so it is good to go the fluid settled in it's got the right fluid in it it runs nice and cool it ships good i drove it i'm gonna take my laptop and adjust the shift points a little bit on it but other than that 